This problem talks about a spring that is attached to a wall, and then that spring lies on a rough surface. That means there's probably going to be some friction. So before we solve this, we should probably draw a picture of what's going on. So we have the wall, here's the wall, and then here's the surface, and then how about here's our spring attached to the wall. And then it says that a block is pushed up against the spring. So there's our block of mass m, and then our spring constant can be k. And the block is released and it travels a distance of 90 centimeters from its point of release before coming to rest. Okay, so uh, let's say that this distance is how much the spring was compressed, because we know it was compressed from its equilibrium position, where it would like to be. And then let's say that the block moved a distance d beyond the equilibrium position. Okay, so it says when the block is released, it travels a distance of 90 centimeters from its point of release. So that 90 centimeters is actually x plus d. So maybe we'll write that right now. x plus d is 90 centimeters, which is 0 0.90 meters. Okay. And then we also have a spring with force constant k, which is 120 newtons per meter. And we have the mass of the block is 1.2 kilograms. And the block is compressed 18 centimeters, so that's just x. So x is 18 centimeters or 0 0.18 meters. And I think that's all that we know right now. And so this again looks like it could be solved using forces or it could be solved using energy. Uh, I'm going to use energy to solve this. So since we have friction here, we're looking for a coefficient of kinetic friction. I can't use conservation of mechanical energy. I have to use the general conservation of energy, which was the change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy equals the work due to non-conservative forces. So our non-conservative force here is friction. Okay, so I can write this out as k final minus k initial, that's what the delta means, plus u final minus u initial, that's what the delta means for the u, equals work due to non-conservative forces. Now there's no change in height here, so I don't really need to worry about a zero line for gravitational potential energy. Uh, I mean, the zero line could just be the line that the block is uh, traveling along right now. Um, I do have elastic potential energy, so uh, let's try and do this and we'll see what happens. So, okay, kinetic energy final. Well. Let's say this is initial, where the block is pushed up against the spring, and this is final when it stops. You should always specify what initial and final are. Okay, so initially the block is pushed up against the spring, and it's not moving, and after it stops over here it's not moving. So I actually don't have any kinetic energy here, because it's not moving initially, and it's not moving after it's traveled this distance to the final spot. Okay, uh, I do have some potential energy though. Now, final potential energy, well, once it's over here, I don't have any gravitational potential energy, and the spring by that point will not be compressed anymore, so I don't have any final potential energy, but I do have some initial potential energy. That would be elastic potential energy, so that's negative initial potential energy, so that must be negative one-half kx squared, okay? And now work due to non-conservative forces. So the work due to non-conservative forces, I can, I can figure out just by using the work formula. Remember that work is the force times the magnitude of the displacement times the cosine of the angle between the force vector and the displacement vector. So in this case, my force vector, this is friction, so this is really the force of friction, so this is the work done by friction, that's my non-conservative force. Friction opposes motion, 
So the force vector and the displacement vector are opposite one another. That means that in this case, theta is 180 degrees and the cosine of theta is negative one. So I also need to be careful about what is D? What is this? So is this the same D that I have in my picture? Well, it's not. It's the whole distance that's traveling. So this D, maybe I'll call this a D zero or something because it's not the same D that I have here. This is my total displacement, which actually is X plus D. So you have to be a little bit careful with your notation. Okay, so uh, I have 180 degrees and I know that the cosine of 180 degrees is negative one. So my work due to non-conservative forces is negative force of friction. And then, and then this D right here is not actually this D. This is the total distance it travels X plus D. Okay, so I'm almost done. I'm almost ready to solve here. <clears throat> I just need to sub in for force of friction. That's one thing I don't have in my list of values up here. So force of friction, well, if you do a quick free body diagram here for the block, we have a normal force, we have a weight, and then here's the force of friction opposing the motion. And you can see here that um, force of friction is always mu times the normal force. And the normal force here is equal to the weight because the weight and the normal force oppose each other. So this is mu times the weight, which is mg. So I can write 1 half kx squared equals minus mu mg x plus d. Okay, now I'm almost done. I just gotta solve for mu, and I have a minus sign on each side, so that can turn into a plus on each side. And that's about all I can cancel. So mu equals divide mg x plus d over the other side. So that's 2 mg x plus d, and then a kx squared in the numerator. So that 2 came from the 1 half in front of the 1 half kx squared. Again, if you need to take a couple extra steps to do the algebra, that's fine. And now I'm ready to plug in. So mu equals, so in the denominator, I have two times the mass, which is 1.2 kilograms. G is 9.81 meters per second squared. X plus D is 0 0.90 meters. So I don't need to actually solve for them individually. K is 120 newtons per meter. And X is 0 0.18 meters, and then that's squared. Okay, and if you do this on the calculator, you end up getting a value of 0 0.18 for the coefficient of kinetic friction.